All right, welcome back to One Bills Live. Chris Brown, Steve Casper with you, and pleased to be joined now by a guy that's coached in the college game and a little bit in the NFL for over 40 years, former head coach at the University of Miami, Butch Davis, joining us here, who obviously had Ken Dorsey as his quarterback down there when they won a national championship. Coach, how you doing? Doing good, Chris. It's good to be with you. So let, let's start here on the subject of Ken. You get him down there uh, in Coral Gables. What, whether it was on a recruiting visit to his house in high school or whether once you got him on campus, what stuck out the most about his personality from the time yeah. you first met him? Well, the very first time I saw him, obviously I'd watched all of his high school film and he'd had a very, very successful high school career. But I flew from Miami on a red flight all the way to San Francisco, rented a car, went and they were going to play a basketball scrimmage at like eight o'clock in the morning. And I get there and I look and I go, oh man, they're, his Kenny's team, they're going to get blown out of this gym. They're, there's got no chance. The other team was way more athletic, more bigger, stronger. And uh, they start the scrimmage and Kenny immediately it jumped out what what he did great with the ball. He brought the ball down the field. Here's here's a guy that's six foot five as a as a skinny you know point guard in basketball, and he's looking the defenders off in the one side, and he's hitting guys on breaks in the backside. And I thought that's a quarterback, a guy that can find the open receivers and get guys, and they won the scrimmage and stuff. But then obviously when he came down, you know I mean we had we had some unbelievably talented players. And uh, at Miami, obviously, he started six games for us and played a lot as a true freshman. We beat the number 10 Georgia Tech in the Gator Bowl. But then the next three years, my super games. I mean, Kenny's been in some unbelievable games from a collegiate standpoint, beating the number one team, Florida State, and beating the number two team, Virginia Tech. And we beat Florida in the Sugar Bowl. The next year, they win the national championships, winning in the Rose Bowl. The next year, they should have won the national championship. They kind of got a little bit hosed on the deal, but they, they played in the Fiesta Bowl. So from a career, from a collegiate standpoint, he had unbelievable you know, uh, background from that. But then he got a chance to get into coaching in the National Football League after he played with the 49ers and the Browns. And he got into Super Bowl 50 for the Carolina Panthers. And so when you look at his resume, there's so many great things that Kenny's been involved in. And, and one year that he was out of coaching from the Carolina Panthers, he came to FIU while I was there. And uh, both of us probably had one of the happiest times that we've had from a collegiate standpoint that we both beat the University of Miami, which FIU should never beat the University of Miami. There's no way. Uh, but we upset them and we beat them. And, uh, and, you know, and Kenny was a big deal. We had a quarterback, James Morgan, that was a fourth round draft choice of the, of the Jets. And, and he really truly helped James his mentality. And so you learn from a head coach's standpoint, you watch him and you see, you know, how meticulous he is, how smart he is, how creative he is. And I think, you know, his playing, you know, years in college, you know, he was surrounded with, you know, Jeremy Shockey and Kellen Winslow, and he had all the great wide receivers, Reggie Wayne and stuff. And the thing that you watch him as a play caller, he's going to find ways to help uh, Josh, you know, who's one of the best absolute quarterbacks in the National Football League, they're going to find ways to get the ball in the hands of the guys that can help win games. And so, you know, I know a lot of people are kind of like, oh, he's never been a coordinator before and stuff, but he's going to do a great job. He'll, he'll, he'll really get a great offensive, you know, game plans every single week. What about his ability to, you know, because you've seen him as a coach, you saw him as a player as well, but then when he moved up to the coaching, what kind of, I mean, is he, you know, he kind of strikes us, you know, that you always get these thoughts about coaches being kind of grinders as they sure. prepare. What kind of, how does that, you know, what kind of does he bring to the preparation process for his players and his teammates yeah. and his coaching staff? Yeah, you know, see, that's a great question because I think if you go back and you look at the guys that he played with collegiately, I mean, you're talking about two or three first round draft choices at, at running back and J Reggie Wayne and, and Andre Johnson, Santana Moss. And all of these guys, they were unbelievably high-profile players, 
but they had great respect for Kenny. They, they knew what a grinder he was, how much he watched film. And then when he was on the field, they listened to him. And I think that that's one of the things that uh, the players at Buffalo, they're going to understand that he is going to turn over every single rock to try to find a way to win every single game and get the ball in the hands of guys and, and cut out all the bad things, the things that can, that where you can lose games, protections and turnovers and those kind of things. And, and uh, because you know, the one thing about Kenny that was really, you know, impressive to me coming from high school into college was how smart. I mean, he, he learned our pro offense uh, almost immediately. And as a true freshman, when you come in and you can play with all of those guys, uh, you know, as a true freshman, you, you get a lot of respect. What was it, Coach, about his makeup that made him so good in those high-pressure situations, even as a young player? You know, I, I think it's poise, and I think I think he has an awful lot of confidence that he knows how much film that he studied. He knew the game plan. He knew exactly what needed to be done, um, and he knows. I mean, he, he, there's there's a lot of quarterbacks that I've seen in all the years that I spent it with the Dallas Cowboys and the Cleveland Browns and Tampa Bay Buccaneers and all that. And you see a lot of quarterbacks that they don't know the difference between what are great plays and what are game, what are plays that you're trying to make that can lose the game. And I think that Kenny can do a great job. I mean, he's got a, he just got a super quarterback with Josh Allen. And, and I think that they'll be able to communicate and they'll be able to talk after every single possession on the sidelines and obviously the week leading up to the games and stuff. I think that they'll, they'll click. I mean, Kenny's not one of those guys that's going to like lose his mind. I mean, sometimes you see coaches that are just, you know, they're throwing their headphones they're all mad. They're upset and they destroy the mentality that a quarterback needs to be during the course of a game. What would you, if you had to guess now, because we haven't seen it yet, yep. um, just describe, give a description of what you think Kenny Dorsey's offense will be. I mean, what do you think, uh, give it a personality from this yeah. end of it? Well, I, again, I haven't studied Buffalo's, you know, I watched a little bit of the one of the preseason games the other night, and uh, and I know that, you know, I mean, I just think that Kenny's smart enough and the things that I've seen him do when he was at Miami and then obviously at Carolina, what, what can the quarterback do? Don't ask the quarterback to do things. Well, Josh can do just about everything. So, and then what's the supporting deal? They've got a great running back, uh, the Singletary kid from FAU. I mean, that kid's electric and he can make plays. So they're going to find ways to run the ball, play action pass. They're going to get explosive plays with good wide receivers and stuff. Uh, one of the things that, you know, and I don't know much about the the tight ends and the H backs at Buffalo, but I know this that you know at, at Miami he was surrounded by guys like Jeremy Shockey and a lot of really great tight end players and Kellen Winslow Jr. And so you know if they have that, the, he'll find ways to get all of those in, in personnel groupings to make them a big part of the game plans every single Sunday. Knowing how smart he was from an early age, coach, did you ever? envision ba even back then that he's probably going to be a coach someday was that a thought that crossed your mind even way back then yeah you, you, you kind of like a lot of the kids that i had you go you know what if they ever do get in coaching they're going to be really good you know because of the way in which that they you know you know how kids relate to not only the coaches but how do they relate to their teammates you know and when you step in the huddle and you're standing in a huddle and and, you know, there's seven other guys in the huddle that are going to be first-round draft choices, and you can get those guys to play to the highest level, he ought to be a coach, you know? And, uh, I mean, we had, you know, Bryant McKinney, the left tackle. We had some great players in the offensive line and the receivers. But they, they honest to God, they really, truly, they respected Kenny the way that he practiced and the way he, they knew he was going to be prepared, and they trusted him that on Saturday, when it was time to show up, I mean, his record is 38-2, and two, so that's a pretty good <laughs> record. They know he's going to do what it takes to win the game. What do you think about when he'd come off the field as a quarterback, what was his demeanor like when things were – I know it didn't go very bad for him very much yeah. at Miami. What kind of guy was he between series and as – you know, as, uh, with his teammates, that kind of stuff on the sidelines? Yeah. He wanted to know exactly what was going on. I mean, he would come to the sidelines. And there'd be, a, you know, Larry Coker, who was the offensive coordinator. And, he, you know, I'd hired him. And Larry and I had been together at Oklahoma State with Jimmy Johnson. And, and they had a good communication on the sideline as to, okay, how did you see this? Are they doing exactly what we saw on the film in preparation? Because 
all the good teams, they're going to throw wrinkles in. They're going to, whether it's disguises, they're going to show you a certain coverage. And then the, as the as time comes down or as motion happens or shifts, they're going to change things. And so, you know, Kenny, are you on the same page? Did you see it the same way that we did? Yeah, we did and whatever. And, and again, we go back to the idea that Kenny was smart. And, uh, and, and so he has the ability to immediately change things in his mind. Okay, hey, we thought that they were going to do this. If we got into trips, they're going to play this. They didn't. Okay, well, now your reads are going to be this, this, and this. And we're going to change it to that. And so uh, I think that's one of the really, really good things about being a smart quarterback. I, I've been blessed. I mean, with the coaching career, obviously, at Miami as an assistant coach, we had Bernie Kosar and Vinny Testaverde and Steve Walsh. We had all kinds of quarterbacks at Oklahoma State and stuff. And the guy that was probably somewhat similar to Kenny as a player was probably Bernie Kosar. I mean, he was a brilliant, smart guy. And, and uh, you know, it didn't matter what you showed up. You wanted to, If you said they're going to always play cover two on this down and distance and they played something else, it didn't make any difference. He knew how to read things and get the ball to things. And I think that that's what Kenny's going to be able to do, you know, with Josh. Uh, I got to get your take on this, Coach, because – Coach Dorsey is still going through the decision on whether to be upstairs or down on the sidelines. As the coordinator, he spent most of the preseason upstairs because he spent most of his coaching career on the sidelines, so he's familiar with yes. that. But when we ask his players, they're like, oh, no, he's got to go up in the booth. He's too hyper-competitive. He's going to go nuts uh, on the <laughs> sidelines. We can't have him bed cussing out a, an official or something. Are, have you ever seen the hyper-competitive, excitable side of Ken? Uh, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen it in scrimmages. I've seen it in games. I've seen it in preparation for high profile games when we played Virginia Tech and Florida State and Florida and those teams and stuff like that. But I will tell you, I'm going to be on the same side as the, as the as the players. I love for the coordinators, especially to be in the press box uh, for all the years that I was a head coach and all the years that I was with Jimmy Johnson. Uh, you know, the coordinators are up there because you get great vision. You get a chance to see everything. You got all the, you know, the opportunity to, to uh, you, you see things immediately before the ball's ever snapped. You get all the, you know, it's, it's such a better view being up there than it is being down on the sidelines. I know that there's a lot of guys that they want to be down there to, to make calls or they want to, you know, if, if you don't have somebody that can, that can communicate and talk to the players, uh, you know, then that's a different story where sometimes maybe a defensive coordinator being on the sidelines uh, because they need to make adjustments with the front seven or the back seven and and uh, they can't get it done from the press box. But uh, Jimmy Johnson just believed and we had guys, I mean, we had North Turner, Ernie Zampezi, we had some unbelievable great offensive coordinators and I sat in the press box with them up there and you loved being there watching how they saw things and they knew immediately the very next possession, we got to change this, we got to do this. Well, Butch, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming on. Everybody's uh, very curious about, about Kenny, how he's going to do it. In fact, yeah. you and Leslie Frazier, the defensive coordinator, are the first people we call have ever called him Kenny, everybody up here is Ken, you know. So we, <laughs> yeah, we feel we feel if you know, if you knew so familiar. Him since he was, yeah, if you knew him since he was 17 years old, you'd probably call him Kenny. You know, I guess. So thanks, Thank but we appreciate your time. You bet, guys. Great to visit with you and tell Kenny I said hello.